Hello, my name is Tom Hugard, and this is the second edition of a scalping presentation that I have been doing for uh, my Telegram group. I'm going to fast forward to the new slides. This is a fairly substantial presentation running over 300 pages, so I'm just going to go through to the uh, to the second part of this presentation. If you want the notes, you can contact me. I'll give you the contact details after the presentation. I think we're close to it. Here we go. Okay, so scalping lesson number two, more advanced entries. <clears throat> the last lesson involved establishing volatility during the day, i.e. getting a number on uh, the underlying volatility so you can have a sensible stop placement. And this I categorized through different kinds of, of volatility stages measured by the average true range but also breaking it down hour for hour during the trading hours in America. Um, I also introduced it to concepts such as buy on close and sell on close, and the notes gave a really thorough explanation to what is meant by buy on close or sell on close. If you haven't got the notes, you're more than welcome to contact me on hello at tradertom.com. So as we are headed into a more advanced concept on scalping, I want to address the human side of scalping because it's it's no good you think that scalping is all about technique. It might be if you programmed an algo, uh, but I'm not an algo trader. I am a point and click trader. And it means that when I scalp, I really need to be up for it. I need to be alert. I need to have slept well. I need to have that aggressive streak to it. Imagine you're walking into a trading pit and you are essentially in there making a market uh, six, seven hours a day. You can't go in there with a, with a hangover or low blood sugar or unresolved issues with your wife or, or, or girlfriend or husband, partner, etc. You need to be clear headed. You need to be level headed and you need to be emotionally absolutely up for it. You need to be very quick to admit your defeat when defeat stares you in the face because any little defeat will have the propensity to uh, blow your account or make a big dent in your account. Uh, the, the flip side of it is you need to be very slow to accept your success. So if you are on the right side of a scalp, just because you're up two or three points doesn't mean that they couldn't become four, five, six points, which means that uh, that you actually have to also accept that at any time your victory could be snapped from your very hands. So all of those points alone that I've just listed makes scalping a near impossible uh, task to achieve successfully. Having said that, I do it. I do it well. And there can only be one reason why I do it well is because I have accepted the conditions that I operate under. Uh, I come to that realization through uh, through trial and error over a long period of time. So I hope that you don't see this presentation as a uh, get rich quick scheme because it really isn't and it really isn't what I stand for either. Uh, I'm, I'm not selling you anything here. Um, uh, it, my integrity as a trader and also as an educator is in incredibly important to me because I think this industry, the, the trading industry, but also the educational industry is fraught and littered with people who, are, who don't actually walk the path they are talking about, which is one of the primary reasons why I started the Telegram channel called the Trader Tom uh, live trading channel. So as we progress into the technical side of scalping, to me, scalping is about the extremes. I am looking for places to buy and sell where I believe that there's orders. People want to take profits uh, after a push higher or push lower, or people who want to be filled on the other side of the extremes of the market. But in order to undertake that, it means an enormous amount of, uh, uh, of studying of the behavior. And you can't apply, in my, in my book, People that trade, say the FTSE, will be different people to the people that trade, say the DAX or the Dow. They don't behave 
identically. I wish I could say they do, and I know one of the axioms of technical analysis is that all charts are alike, all charts are created equal. But I don't believe that's true for one second. For example, I wouldn't dream of scalping, say, euro dollar, even though I could perhaps scalp it on a 0.2 or 0.4 spread. Um, and I, I and I simply say that because I I think from from a from a monetary perspective, there's more money to be made in say stock indices than in euro in, in say euro dollar. I may be persuaded uh, uh, down the line. I can't I can't say that my behavior couldn't change over the the coming months or years. But as it stands, I prefer to scalp stock indices because I believe that there's more money in that. It's very important that the choice of the broker that you engage with has tight spreads, preferably fixed spreads. So you always know what prices you're going to get filled at. It's no good that you're trading with a broker that sometimes has three point spread in the FTSE and then at other times has one point spread. You need it to be stable. Um, as I already alluded to, the preparation side is incredibly uh, significant. And there I don't just mean the the technical perspective, but also the mental perspective. But when all is said and done, why are we doing this? Well, we're doing it for the rewards and in time and with a stomach for trading higher stake sizes, you can very quickly make a decent amount of points. I use the word points because I don't really want to use the word money because that's sort of um, by keeping it to points, you objectify your mission. But money is, is terribly emotional for most people. One of the reasons why, even though anyone can learn technical analysis, very few people actually manages to make significant money from trading. Uh, but in order to give, give you an idea, I was uh, scalping uh, earlier today uh, before ahead of this presentation, and then, and you know you could accuse me of just uh, of, of of showing you the winning example, and and to some degree I am. Uh, guilty of that. Having said that, also, uh, if I just showed you the losing trades, you might be put off the presentation. And that would be a shame because actually, I believe that there is some merit to what I have to say, something that you can utilize in your own trading. So as you as you look at the uh, um, as, you, as you look at the, the the entry points, one of the things I would like to highlight for you is that Scalping doesn't necessarily mean that you are in one second and then you're out the next second. As you'll see from these uh, trades here, um, you, you'll you'll notice that uh, I have I have bought uh, here at uh, at 28 seconds past and then again at, uh, at at 30 seconds past and then at 49 seconds past. And that's obviously because I was thinking that there's actually a a, a runner to be had. You'll also notice here that I don't necessarily hold back from uh, adding to a losing trade. And that obviously makes it a very uh, difficult proposition to justify from a, a standard uh, technical analysis and money management perspective, because the, the, the law states that you can never ever add to a losing trade. But I believe as a scalper, you, you can actually find yourself uh, to some extent an advantage by uh, scaling into a trade if you have a really strong and compelling argument for doing so. But please don't let me uh, be the one that persuades you to break uh, the things that you have worked so hard to eradicate. So if you had a tendency to um, uh, add to, uh, uh, to to losing trades, then it's pro and you finally got rid of that bad trade, it might not be the best of ideas that I then come in and say it's perfectly okay. But I can only illustrate to you what I do. And as there's no there's no lack of academic uh, research from scalping from the perspective of what we are doing, I can only show you, uh, consider it as an anecdotal uh, evidence. Um, but I also know that what I do does hold up over time and is profitable for me, at least. Uh, let me show you another example here, um, because technical analysis doesn't have to be overtly complicated either. So what you're seeing here is a top in the market. And all I'm doing here is I'm selling a double top. And, and, the, and the, the time stamp here says it's about, about 9.30. And so I'm entering here at 09.23, uh, 35. And again, I got 09.23, uh, 
39. And at this point here, I have about a 1500 uh, pound profit. And I've been in the position for maybe 45 seconds, maybe close to a minute. Now, please don't, ex don't, please don't. One of the, one of the dangers that our minds do is it extrapolates because you're saying, well, wow, if I can make 1500 pounds in 45 seconds, how much money could I make in an hour? Well, hang on this, there's, there's 60 minutes and that's only 45 seconds. So, oh my God, that probably means that I could do this over and over for about 80 times during a, uh, 80 times during an hour, that means I could probably make about 90,000 pounds. Yeah, hold your horses there, Bobby boy, because unfortunately, that's just your mind extrapolating. So for every one of these, you're probably also going to have one of these um, every every 10, 15 minutes where it's not a plus, but it's a minus, okay? And it's essentially how you add it up at the end of the day that counts, not what you make on an individual trade. And just to prove that point here, uh, they are most certainly also losing trades. And here, this is probably closer to what you uh, associate with scalping. I got in at uh, 09.30.25 and 12 seconds later, sorry, um, uh, 17 seconds later, I'm already out of the position. And I, I added here as well. It just goes to show how quickly I can actually execute trades when I want to. And I just feel like this is this is not right. There's something on the chart, whatever it may be, I don't know, but there was something on that chart that I didn't like and I got out. And the result of it, losing trade. Okay, so what I want to do is, to, I'm gonna go through yesterday's um, trading session in the FTSE. What I've shown you here is a five minute chart, okay? And the reason why I, I chose the FTSE is because I trade with a, a broker that has an incredibly tight spread in the FTSE at 0 0.4, which is incredibly tight. Um, every bar chart that you're seeing here, or candle chart here you see is, is a five minute chart. I already mentioned that. And the reason why I chose yesterday is because I want to not choose some day that somehow glorifies what it is that I'm talking about. Because if you wanna learn to scalp, you need to learn to scalp under any condition. It's a bit like if you want to learn to windsurf, you got to be able to learn to windsurf in a slightly breezy summer sunny day. But if you really want it to be exciting, uh, you also got to need to to handle the, the, the harder breezes and, and the strong winds. And then eventually you're building up to handle the strong winds in, in treacherous ways. Uh, I'm a wave surfer and I learned to to, to surf in a, in a little paddle, <laughs> uh, you know, one foot waves. But once you get good at the one foot waves, you want to you want to you want to surf the two foot waves, and then you want to do the three foot waves. And before you know it, you want to do double head high surf waves, and you don't really get a kick out of trading, uh, sorry, surfing the the small waves anymore. And I think that's a pretty good metaphor for what trading also develops. Like you start off by trading one lot, two lot, five lots, and then you build up to 10 lots, 20 lots, 100 lots. And if you're a 100 lot trader, not so easy to go back to trading a five lot or one lot. Not that I haven't done it myself. When I go through trading spells where I don't do well, uh, I will scale my, my, my trading size down so in order to gain my confidence back up. Anyway, enough chit chat here. As I said earlier, uh, scalping in many respects is just like any other perspective of technical analysis. And the fact that I'm trading it on a five minute chart doesn't mean that I don't actually execute longs or shorts during that time frame. The previous presentation that, that you may or may not have the notes for would have shown you a concept called buy on close or sell on close. Uh, so I won't go through that here. But what I want to do is I want to tell you that as it comes to technical analysis, this to me, is, I can't even draw a, a straight line. It's one of the biggest hurdles I have when I do these presentations is when I have to draw a horizontal line freehand. Um, why wouldn't I sell short the FTSE here? It's a double top to me. So what I do when I trade is I will run my DAX chart and my Dow chart alongside because it will give me the confirmation that I need. Uh, because the indices are correlated, it also means that if, if one index is ticking lower, it will have a tendency to at least put a lid on any progress on another index.
when it comes to stop loss, what if I'm wrong? I don't trade with a stop loss. I simply don't have time to input a stop loss. So you have to address this as if you were a pit trader. Yeah, so imagine, um, let me see, let me see. Uh, imagine the movie with uh, Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd uh, called Trading Places. You know, in the in the latter part of the movie when they walk into the orange uh, the orange juice pit in um, I think it might be New York actually because I think it's the Twin Towers they are walking into. Um, you, it, it, it's not feasible to have a stop loss when you are uh, when you're you're trading. It's it's simply not feasible. So you have to address it. As, I'm in. Oh, it looks like I am on the wrong side. I better get out. When are you getting out? Up to you. Up to your research. But let's explore the setups and then we can address the risk parameters accordingly. I'm selling short right here, and the way I've addressed or approached this presentation is that I've shown you or taken a screenshot as the day progressed on a bar by bar basis. As I observe this pattern here, I have shorted the, the FTSE above this high here. So somewhere along here, I am short. I got my hand over the exit button, um, the, the next bar it didn't leave me much danger, the next bar is rewarding me with a good profit. Do I take profits here? Do I take profits here? Uh, taking profits is a, a subject on its own, but the way I address it is you try and let it run for as long as you can, and if you are lucky to get out here, count yourself lucky. If you are getting out here, well, at least it's still a profit. So I, I, I don't do a great uh, post-mortem of every single trade. The purpose here is to make points, but I also know that actually trying to analyze whether you got out here or there or there is almost pointless. As we now view this chart from this vantage point of this is the latest bar we have to deal with, where is the extremes? Well, the extremes that we have we're up here and here. And the other extremes that we have are down here. So at this moment in time, what I'm doing is waiting. I'm waiting for the extremes to be breached and then I will immediately decide what I want to do. Just fair warning, obviously I wanna be a seller because I believe that this is a trading range and I wanna be a buyer down here. But right now I'm probably more in focus on being a seller. I have no open positions. Whatever short sell I took up here, I hopefully took profits down here or here. Or maybe I was really lucky and I got out here. Unlikely. But every now and then you do manage to get the absolute nail of a button. And more often than not, you get out up here rather than down here. I like to uh, blow smoke up your behind, but <laughs> I'm not that good. Okay, so... What you're seeing here is a market that first attacked a, a sell here and it was immediately rejected. Now what's interesting here is that what you're seeing now, if you'd sold here, absolutely perfect. You did the right thing. Maybe you got out at absolutely nothing if it was back up here. Maybe you were lucky and you just uh, got out here for a handful of points, whatever it may be. But this isn't really not the lesson that I want to teach you. What you're seeing here is not the completed chart. This bar that you're seeing right here is not the close. This bar is still in progress. And what you're going to experience as a scalper is that you will see this and you have sold short here or maybe here, but the mob moves against you and is going to feel wrong. It's going to feel scary. If this bar had closed here, this would have set up what I call a buy on close setup because the market had closed at its most extreme bullish within this five minute time frame. But what if it looked like this? See, this five minute bar is not closed yet. It means that it can still close lower. And that's for this reason, and this is a very important point. 
I always keep an eye on the clock. I have a clock in front of me that is aligned with the closure of the five minute bar. So if I know that there's still 90 seconds left of this five minute bar here, I'm not going to panic. If it closed right now, I would be a buyer. But as a matter of fact, when this screenshot was taken, there was still approximately 90 seconds before this five minute bar was closed. And when it did close, it looked like this. And that is why scalping is difficult. You have to do things intuitively. Sorry, you have to do things that intuitively feels wrong. No one really in their right mind would want to be a seller here. But someone did. And not only that, you're going to have to do it over and over and over. If you can train yourself to do that which does not come natural to you, then you have a great future ahead of you, either in scalping or and or on, on trading in general, because more than 80% of people fail at trading. And do you think that they fail because they don't understand a double top? The answer is, of course, they do. Of course, they understand a double top. But you need a special emotional fortitude, which, of course, you can train yourself to. The, the way you train yourself is to repeatedly expose yourself to situations and thereby you're almost a blunting your amygdala. You're simply creating an environment where your panic fear center is no longer firing because, hey, if you're afraid of spiders, but you're confronted with spiders nine, ten hours a day, I assure you after the week four, you're probably not going to be so scared and intimidated by spiders anymore. And if you constantly expose yourself to heights, even though you suffer from uh, fear of heights, well, the, the amygdala will begin to fire less and less and less because you have repeatedly confronted yourself. Uh, can I give you a real life example? Yeah, I can. I, I'm, I'm from the northern hemisphere. I come from a little tiny kingdom in the world called Denmark. And in Denmark, we have, well, we used to have some bitterly cold winters, but, you know, with climate change, they're not so bitterly cold anymore. But it does get cold enough. And what do you think I love to do in the winter? I love nothing more than jumping in the sea. That sometimes means that uh, I'll have to drill a little hole or a big hole and I dive into what's basically got ice on top. Now, I assure you that the rational mind could think of nothing less compelling to do than to jump into an icy lake or an icy ocean. Nevertheless, for some reason, I find that it invigorates me and I like doing it. But I also know that I kind of have to keep on top of it um, because if I skip uh, a month or so of, of ice bathing, my body is not overly keen to go for a little swim in five degrees Celsius. And it takes a little bit of an acclimatization if I've been away from it. Um, it might not be the best, best metaphor, but it, it never lets go a long way in explaining how you can also desensitize yourself to that stimuli that your brain will expose yourself to. Go, oh my God, you want me to sell short here. This thing is going higher. Well, you've done your research and maybe it will go higher, in which case you are being going to be faced with a loss. But once you see that, you know that the cards are on your side. And that's what you need to be able to do over and over. So what you're basically seeing here is a trading range, a trading range where the ranges are constantly probed. That's what I mean by the extremes, because that's what the market is doing. It's fishing after orders below prior lows and it's fishing above orders above prior highs. But once you are in a trading range, the vast majority of attempts to break out of the trading range will fail. Al Brooks describes that so well in his videos. I don't remember the percentage, but I believe Al says that about 60% of all attempts to break a trading range will fail. So it actually makes more sense to bet against that the trading range is succeeding. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to study the last two bars. 
they're the two green bars. This is a pretty reliable setup. I want you to look at this bar. Oops, I want you to look at this bar here and this bar here. Whenever I see two bars where the highs are in close proximity to each other, but maybe it's still in the context of a trading range, I am ready to sell short the market if it manages to get above the high of the prior bar. I want to show you for you. I want to show you uh, many examples so you can you can begin to be alert to this. It means I am ready to short if this bar manages to go above the high of the prior bar. Why? Because I have some special insight. No, because I have seen it happen so many times. And what we are doing here is we are observant of human behavior, and it is our job not to to, to forecast or to gaze into a, a crystal ball, but to be students of human behavior. Now, to me, scalping is a side venture when I'm in positions. And I want to tell you a short story about a gentleman called Amos Hostetter. That is a story that was told by my friend and mentor, Larry Pesavento. Now, the story of Amos is, in quarter to Larry, is he's one of the biggest private traders ever, and he trades huge positions. So one of his colleagues comes into his uh, trading office somewhere in America, and Amos looks like he is sweating uh, a major position. And the colleague is saying, am I disturbing you? And he says, no, no, come on in. Uh, I'm just trading pork bellies. And, and the colleague says, well, hang on, you don't trade pork bellies at all. You trade wheat, you trade soy, you trade oats, uh, grains in general. Why are you trading? Why are you trading hogs and pork bellies? He said, "Well, because I am, I'm currently in a position in oats and wheat and soy, etc., and I am trying to take my mind off the fact that I am losing on these other positions because they are position trades. So I'm, I'm scalping, I'm scalping pork bellies in a one contract." It's a funny story, but it's also a story that uh, that that shows that even very big professional traders need something to take their mind off what it is that is transpiring uh, in their core positions. So for me, scalping is this thing that I don't do as a full-time occupation, but something I do on the side whilst I'm watching the FTSE, the Dow, the Euro dollar, and anything else that I'll be trading. I thought it was a humorous story. So we are now back to the extreme here. And as we approach this, you have already sold short. And that's the thing about the, scalp the scalping mindset. You're not waiting for confirmation. So often people will wait for the market to confirm the negative stance or the positive stance, but you don't, you commit. You don't wait for support or resistance. You are support and resistance. It means as we come up here, you don't hesitate. You don't bat an eyelid. You immediately sell short right up here. You don't wait for it to close below this or close below this. No, nope. you immediately execute a short right here, right now. And of course, you'll always run the risk that is going to rocket against you. And you may have a, a big lose on your hand. But that's what scalping is about. Not losing, of course, but actually being immediate without hesitation. And you will ample of times discover this, where you might be right for a few seconds, maybe 30 seconds, only to find that the market then pushes against you again. And you might be thinking, I better get out of this one because this is not working. It means you have to be quick to pull um, that exit plug because it doesn't feel right or it doesn't look right or you're simply losing too many pips. Uh, the pattern that I showed you before, I wanted to show you a couple of more examples. Here's an identical setup, except that this time around, I don't actually get the sell. The market moves lower without me. I might have done a sell on close pre see the previous presentation on that, but I don't get that opportunity to sell short above here because the market doesn't push higher, unfortunately. You could argue the same here, although it's not the best of examples because those two are a little bit too further apart here. 
Um, this is not a bad example. These two are quite close to each other, still in the context of a, of a, of a slight bear trend. Market just manages to get above. A sell short here would be advantageous. I don't know whether I actually executed a short here. I'd like to think that I did, but I can't guarantee it. I may have been preoccupied elsewhere. Yeah, same setup. I observe these two. So you often get a couple of bars. You could also argue, well, hang on, what about over here? Yeah, see, you don't actually get the cell here. And if it then comes on the second bar, i.e. bar number four, if I call this one, two, and it's really on the third bar I wanted, I don't really want it on the fourth bar. Just an observation, please feel free to amend to the rules uh, as you see fit. All right, let's carry on. Now, what I've just gone through was the easy bit. It was easy because there was a lot of back and forth. Then we had a little push and then there was a lot of back and forth. That's easy to trade. It's basically range, slight push, range. And it's not that difficult to be a range trader. But how do you handle a market that begins to expand, i.e. it begins to trend? Because what we've basically done is almost like a scalp mean reversion strategy. And if you deploy a scalp mean reversion strategy when the market begins to expand or trend, you will lose. So let's take a look at the situation from yesterday, because yesterday was very much a trading day where you had a sideways trade range and then the market began to expand as the US markets open. So this is a continuation of the previous charts, but we're now in the afternoon session and the US markets are pushing higher and with it, the FTSE. You are in every right to be a seller up here if you want to. You would have success with that, but at this point here, you're going to get a big push up. Now, imagine you sold short here, which your trading really should uh, see you to do. What if the market closed here? You see, this is why I think it's important that you also look at the prior presentation because it will have what I call buy on close. But if you have a bar that closes right here, you're in trouble. If you're short here, you're in trouble. When I scalp, I keep a sharp eye on the DAX index and the Dow index because I believe that they are correlated. So today on the 23rd of April, uh, I pushed the FTSE really hard to the downside. There was this morning. Uh, I was short about 1,200 pounds a point, if not a bit more. And I had to trust that the DAX would eventually persuade the FTSE to give it up. The FTSE was trading around 65, 66, and I was heavily, heavily short. While the DAX was going down, the FTSE was trading sideways in a band from about 65 to 70. All of a sudden, the FTSE goes up to 78. And I'm thinking, hang on, DAX down, FTSE up. This is a recipe for disaster if I don't begin to get out. So I started uh, lightening the position because I'd already made the decision to actually get out and take my loss. When the FTSE began to fall back again and the position that I had just closed, I began to add them back on. Was it expensive? Yeah, of course it was. Because for every contract that I had is 100 pounds, I lost about um, somewhere between eight and 12 points. But was it the right thing to do? Yes, it was. In this case, it was. But if I was unaware of the correlation between the FTSE and the DAX and the Dow during the trading day, I might just have missed a really good opportunity to make back. Was it profitable? Well, yeah, it was profitable, but <laughs> Also bear in mind that I'd just taken quite a substantial loss by having been on the wrong side of the market. So all it really did was to help me make back some of the money uh, that I had just previously lost. But here's the thing. You never know what's going to come next. So if you see the Dow and the DAX break higher and you're contemplating a short in the FTSE, 
you might just want to hold off a while. If you're seeing the DAX and the Dow push higher and you see this, maybe in time ahead of this double top, you might want to hold back. Otherwise, if the market close here, not a good idea to still carry on holding a short position. Because actually, this pattern that you're seeing here, this is a buy on close. The market pulls back a couple of bars. 10 minutes can seem like eternity when you're scalping, by the way. I don't really have anything particularly enlightening to say about this pattern here. You often see pullbacks last two bars, sometimes three to five, but often two bars. And then we're getting another push higher. Even this pattern alone that you're seeing here is still a buy on close. Not as strong as this here where you have barely any tail, but here you have some tail, but nevertheless a buy on close. As the setup works for sales, so too does it for buys. And that means that right now you have two uh, bars that have lows that are relatively close to each other. And on the third bar, the market push below, and that's when I am a buyer down here. In, in this particular uh, case, it, it, it took a little while before the market actually began to push higher. And there weren't that many points in it, but nevertheless, it was a profitable trade. Also notice, as scalpers, scalpers have no use for Bollinger Bands, moving averages, Fibonacci, etc. Scalping has, the Bible of scalping is support and resistance. Patterns and support and resistance and an understanding of what's going on. So now we are again back to waiting for extremes. Sellers are coming in, buyers are supporting the market. Actually hard to figure out here, did I sell short first or did I buy first? I don't remember. Let's see what happens next. Okay, so imagine here that uh, you sold the double top, but now you bought the double bottom and this happened. What would you do? You need to cultivate an attitude of, oh dear, this is not looking good and I probably just shouldn't sit around and wait because I'm currently trading 400 pounds a point and the market has just moved 10 points against me rather rapidly. I think I just need to get out of Dodge quickly and then um, compose myself and get back on the horse. Conclusion is you don't have time nor the emotional bandwidth to sit and rationalize your position. If it looks wrong, get out. I know it's going to cost you but it's a lot better than it costs you your account. Did you hear what I just said? You have to cultivate an attitude of, oh dear, this is not working. I am totally on the wrong side. I need to get out. You don't start looking up at your P&L going, oh dear, I can't afford to lose this amount of money. You get out and you get back on the horse. Why? Because you don't want to be the 80%. You don't want to be the 90%. You are a one percenter and the only way you're going to achieve and maintain the one percent status is by doing the things that people don't like to do. Get that into your head and you'll be immensely successful. You might not appreciate it in that moment of time, but cultivating that behavior over time will get you to where you want to be. Success is not what we do every now and then. Success is what we do all day long. And you know what true commitment is? True commitment is doing that very thing that you need to do long after all the inspirational talk has left you. And all long after all your desires to do the right thing has left you. Here we got another two bar setup. Those two are in close proximity to each other and we are sellers above. With a bit of skill, you'll learn to sell short here. No, joking. <laughs> if you sell short here, you get the gold price, okay? Someone like me, I'll probably have sold short there. And then I would have sweated there, and then I would have been very happy there. Do I take profits down here? Quite possibly. Are you beginning to get the, the hang of this? You never know what's around the corner. 
So you always have to have that in the back of your mind if you're scalping. You have no idea if we're going to fly higher or we are going to make a big splash down. Anything can happen. The best you can do is to trade the patterns. And you'll discover new patterns. I have discovered this. You too will discover these things. You will, you'll sell short here, basis on my teaching, but you will find your own little your own little patterns and they will be immensely beneficial to you. Would you excuse me? I am on the wrong side of the market and I just need to. Close some positions. Sorry about that. That's how you know that this presentation is live. When the uh, the person doing the announcement is uh, stopping to close his losing positions. How can the market rally after you had the most shocking unemployment numbers in the history of unemployment numbers? Anyway, moving on. As I said, you never know what's around the corner and you will be confronted with patterns like this where you think, oh dear, I am most certainly on the wrong side. But you may also decide, no, nope, I'm selling short here, which case you are short. The problem with this pattern, I think, is that patterns like this often have a tendency, uh, ex extended bars as I call them, often have a tendency to push the market at least temporarily a bit higher. Well, that happens. Okay. So what would you do now? Because you could make the argument that here we are not at the extremes. The extremes are up here. So what would you do now? Same pattern, right? Little two bar pattern. Market pushes above. You're selling short. And that is what I'd like you to do all day long, if you are a scalper. If you want to join my Trader Tom live trading room channel, you can do so by downloading an app called Telegram, and then you send me a message to uh, at Tom Hugard. You can so you can search within uh, Telegram by uh, typing in at, and then you type in Tom Hugard. I trade live every single trading day. And there is where you can see a professional trader uh, day trade stock indices. The room does exactly what it says on the tin. It trades live in real time. And over the last 12, 14 months, I have generated some 15,000 pips for uh, the people following my calls. And of course, that's in real time. It's not after the fact. For notes and questions, contact me on hello at tradertom.com. Hope you enjoyed this presentation. Have a nice day.